is Claire Coco, and I'm a pen collector. I love collecting fountain pens. This video is called The Eight Pen Questions 2024. I did it in 2023, so I figured let's do it again. Thank you to at Simone and Leanne Likes for coordinating 2024. It also happens to be our one year anniversary of fountain pen collecting. A little over a year, a year and a few months. I've been delayed, I've been wanting to do a one year anniversary video and life got in the way. <laughs> so this was a great opportunity to put eight pen questions with the year anniversary. And let me tell you, what a difference a year makes. Okay, I got fun. It's all about having fun. I love music, so sometimes I will go out and song, <laughs> or come out and song. So let's get started. Now the questions are the same from last year, and I had to go back and look what I, at what I had done the previous year, and it was interesting because yes, things have changed. But let's start with question number one. When and how did your fountain pen journey begin? Well, our fountain pen journey started December 17th, 2022. And you're going to say, how can you remember that date? I was at a concert at the Hard Rock Casino here in South Florida. And there was a little store that had a little Lamy kiosk. And I'm like, oh, this is cute. I like pens. Um, oh, it's a fountain pen. Okay. I can remember way back when, you know, fountain pens and journaling have brought back all these memories where my mother used to use a Parker and I would, whenever she wasn't looking, I would write with her fountain pen. So you know, this Delami, believe it or not, kind of reminded me of that, even though they're not the same pen. So yes, I do still have my first Red Lamy Safari and I do still use it. It sits on my desk. It's always inked. And uh, that's basically how the journey began. So let's go into question number two. Favorite inks in the beginning and what are your go-to inks now? Well, again, it all started with Lamy. And Lamy does make some amazing inks. I use them till this day. Uh, so yes, Lamy and we had the uh, Pilot Eroshizuku inks. Those were our go-to inks then. And they are still our go-to inks now with a lot more inks. Actually, the Lamy uh, Crystal line we really like as well. And I just inked my brand new 100th an anniversary Monster Struck 149 with the Lamy Crystal Amazonite. It is actually a beautiful um, color and it goes well with this pen. I absolutely love it. Tastes have changed with some of the inks. I know that I don't like light inks. They're great for journaling and artwork, but the lighter ones, not so much for writing. And, but some of my favorite when inks are the new uh, Van Diemen inks. I love Van Diemen inks. They're just wonderful. And uh, getting into the shimmer inks. Oh my God, the shimmer inks. And I do have pens that are dedicated to shimmer inks. Uh, for instance, my Benus. I have uh, Benus in broad, and they handle shimmer like it's just a dream to write with. My favorite Van Diemen's shimmer ink is called Azure Kingfisher. I just absolutely love it. It's stunning. It just glistens, and you know the shimmer on it is amazing. So those we do have, uh, we've tried a lot of other inks too that I like. We have Ackermans and uh, your Diamine inks and your Ferris wheel press inks. There's some with Ferris wheel press, the light ones, you know, there's some that are beautiful and I use, some I'll only use for artwork because they were just too light for me. And uh, so we do have your know, Mont Blanc ink, so beautiful. I, we're pretty lucky with some of our inks. Let's go to question number three. 
Have your ink and pen taste changed over time? Yes, they have. Uh, inks have changed. I, I know that I don't, you know, there's a lot of inks that have different properties in it. They, uh, you've got your sheening, your shading, and your shimmering. Well, if it's a, a light sheen, sometimes when I'm writing in um, like Colorverse, for instance, I have Morning Star in one of my pens, and it's a beautiful ink, and I love the way it sheens on the edge of your lettering uh, versus changing the whole color. Sometimes some of these sheening inks, you know, if you, if you buy a blue ink that sheens, well, by the time you're done, your whole paper that is, is, is red. And I, you know, I bought it because I like the pretty blue and I would like minimal sheening. Uh, so sheening inks, uh, not one of my favorites for me, and other people just love the sheen. Uh, depends on the ink. Uh, shimmer inks, I, again, I just said, talked about Van Diemen's. Now, inks that have some shading, yes, I love shading. I love to see the different, uh, you know, light to dark on my page. So there's some inks that do have some beautiful shading. And then some are just standard. And yes, yeah, sometimes you just want a standard ink. So that's, you know, they do change. Now, as far as pens go, I've learned a great lesson early on about pens, uh, not to go uh, gaga over some of the pens that you see. I like, oh, I really like that. Oh, it's on sale, I think I'll get it. And then I get it and I'm disappointed because I need to read measurements of the pen to see the size of the pen if it's sometimes if a pen's too thin i have rheumatoid arthritis and sometimes if i have to hold you know i like a pen that has a bigger grip section for me be them be that i said that there are a few pens like cavecos and stuff that i love and yes it is a small pen but i know that i love the um the metal pens versus the plastic more plastic pens. Uh, I just, the weight of a pen in my hand too, it, you know, if it has a little bit of weight, I like that as well. And so, and if a section is too small, I, I like a bigger section in, in the pen. So yes, my tastes have changed. Uh, now, uh, we go to pen shows now, and our first pen show we ever went to was the DC pen show, and we're like, oh my God, there are so many uh, tables, so many vendors, and being a pen show newbie, we did the pen show newbie mistake. We started buying like almost every pen that we saw. No, not really, but you come home with 17 pens later, and like you said, pen choice has changed, and also uh, acquiring the pens have changed. Uh, don't buy the first pen you see. You know, I have to think about it for a little while. And if I'm still thinking about it, then yes, I'll go ahead and purchase it. Uh, we just have a lot of good times when we go to shows. And I've gone to shows, more shows, and I've learned to take my time to kind of walk the show floor first before I make a decision. I'll go and see what people have. And I'll go back, and then I'll go back again. And, you know, white, I'll like keep a little notebook and I'm like, oh, I like that ink that I just tested and I write it down and, um, oh, I really like that pen and what booth was I at? So I have to write that down and, you know, it gives you good reason to keep circling around and, and thinking about it before you make that purchase. And that's what I've learned as well in this past year. And uh, sometimes if the vendor only has one pen, you're taking the chance of that it's not going to be there when you get back. And, you know, it has happened. And then I'm like, well, it was, wasn't meant to be, and there'll be another pen that comes along. Question number four, are there inks and pens that you have yet to try but would like to? Yes, of course they are. There's so many pen manufacturers. There's you know, you have your brand names, and then you have your independent pen makers, 
And yes, there are a lot of pens out there that we still haven't tried and I would like to. There's a pen right now that I want to try, a uh, brand Onoto. I watch YouTube videos and a lot of the people I subscribe to talk about the pens that they have and I'm like, ooh, I kind of like that. Maybe I'd like to try that one. And uh, my husband, I, when I look back at the video that I did last year, one of the pens he wanted to try was Conway Stewart. He still hasn't gotten that one yet, but who knows, maybe this year he will. Uh, yes, my husband and I, we had the yours, mine, and our collection. Um, I, there are pens that I like, there are pens that he, he likes, and then there are pens that we share, which is kind of nice. What happens when you have two people in a household that both love fountain pens? You tend to go a little crazy. <laughs> And we have, and I love it. And uh, it brings us a lot of joy right now. So like I said, I do want to try uh, the Onoto. Uh, there are probably inks out there, new inks coming out all the time that I would like to try. Question number five, what is your holy grail pen? Well, like I said, I went back and I had to look at the video I did last year and then it was the Visconti Leonardo da Vinci Machina. It's a beautiful pen. Absolutely love it. Uh, I love it for the artwork and everything. It is an art piece for us. Some of the pens that we collect, we collect as artwork. Some people purchase paintings and uh, statues. We collect fountain pens and some of our fountain pens are kept as art pieces. Most of them when we do use, but that one is just a beautiful art piece and right now I'm happy leaving it as an art piece of artwork. But we do have other new grail pens. We've been fortunate to get a few that we've all loved from what we've seen and going to the pen shows we've been able to get some previously loved pens. We were just at the uh, Baltimore Pen Show and I'm, I'm actually I volunteered at the show to help out and uh, that was good for me because I still could peruse around and look at stuff and look around and also help and I love to do that. But as I was doing that, I was getting a text message from my husband saying, oh, oh, I've been boo-boo. I'm like, okay, what did he do now? He has always wanted a David Oscarson pen and someone had it previously loved. And it happened to be the pen that he wanted, which is Harlequin Dreams. And this is the pen. It is absolutely stunning. And I will talk more about these pens in another video. Uh, and he's just thrilled to be owning it. It was just a great find for him. And he was able to get it at a, an amazing price. So yes, previously loved. Uh, I just got a previously loved Pelican M1000 that is uh, the Red Raiden um, and Yurushi. And it's just absolutely stunning. And yes, previously loved. Um, and sometimes if you're searching for those pens and you can find one that was previously loved that's in amazing condition, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a win-win. Uh, price is lower and it still is an amazing writer. Uh, then I'm looking around at my desk here. As you see, I'm just like perusing the desk to see. Uh, we, another thing that we love is the Arushi and Raiden pens and one of them that I got was Sunset Peacock, it's the Tasha pen, which won pen of the year from, from Pen World. And it is just stunning. Um, Arushi and um, Raiden. And it's just the work in it. It does look like a, a peacock, you know? And I do use it. It is inked and uh, with a Tasha ink in here. And I just absolutely, it's just absolutely stunning. And so, yes, that one was not previously loved. Uh, it was an investment. Uh, you know, we have some investments and I do use that one. Um, I absolutely love it. And we, you know, some other uh, fun brands. Now, uh, 
you know, we're talking about the fun brands, like the, we get Monte Grappa. Monte Grappa has some beautiful pens. And yes, I did get a previously loved Frank Sinatra. Uh, and I'm, like I said, into music. And this is just a beautiful pen. It has a microphone for the pen clip, for the clip. And it's the reminiscence of his uh, tuxedo that he used to wear. So, you know, a fi very fun, wonderful pen. So that's it for... Oh, really, that is not it for our Holy Grail pens, but I don't want, I want to make this video not too long and just have a really uh, fun time with it. And like I said, I plan on going into other videos with uh, what, and going over some of the lines that we do have. I'd like to keep this a little bit shorter. Okay, question number six. How many pens do you currently own? Well, actually, I had my husband look at the spreadsheet last night, and I can't believe it myself. We have about 350 fountain pens. And you'd be like, oh, my. Are they all linked? Of course not. You know, like I said, some of them are our art pieces. And others we do have inked. I will unink a couple so I can ink a couple of others that I really want to have been trying. Um, when I ink a pen, I kind of like to write with it until it's out of ink before I can ink, um, ink another one. But uh, we do currently own 350 fountain pens. And, you know, I, this is about fountain pens, but we also have roller balls and some ball points because sometimes you need those. you got to give those the love, too. But sometimes you do need a ball point, and sometimes you do need a roller ball. But uh, right now we're talking about fountain pens. Question number seven. Do you have a limit on pens or inks in your collection? Is it a number? Is it a feeling? When do you know that you have reached your maximum? Well, I don't know. It's got to be a feeling. I know that I have gotten pickier about pens that we own. Uh, I know that I'm not buying every pen that I see. I take my time now. And, uh, you know, there's certain pen lines that I do love. Um, for instance, Scribo. Scribo makes, I love Scribo. <laughs> I love their flex nib on the Scribo. And yes, I have a couple of Scribo pens. And I don't buy every color in a pen line. I do the colors that I love. And I may only do one pen or two pens from that pen line. Uh, until they come out with a new model. <laughs> but I do, you know, and uh, Scribo is coming out with a few more. And I'm like, I got to think about that now. You know, do I want the Ebonite? Uh, and I know they're coming out with something uh, probably later in the year. Same thing with uh, your Leonardo's and your Visconti's. And now I'm being a little bit more picky about the pens that I do get because we do have a lot. And I'm like, okay, well, do I really love it? And, oh, you know, don't forget also, it has to be, okay, do I need it? Well, I don't know, I have a lot, right? But I also enjoy collecting. And by the way, I'm not sponsored in any way. We are just, uh, you know, we, uh, my, it's just my husband and I now, and we just love to collect. And, you know, I just, just have a good time collecting and going to the shows and that's another thing too here in South Florida there's no pen shop for me to go into trying the pens so now I enjoy going to a pen show because then you can feel it you can try it and uh, there's some great online vendors that we deal with and my vendors are listed in the description here of the video so you can go look there a lot of things will be just in the description of, of this video. So, would I ever reach a maximum? I have no clue, but I have definitely slowed down. I have making better choices, um, and you know, you have to really think, and not like, there were pens, for instance, a Visconti came out with the Divina, and I'm like, oh my God, that pen is gorgeous, oh my God, I want it. 
Well, I happened to be at the pen show and I got to hold it and feel it. And I'm like, mm, it's okay. I mean, it's a beautiful pen, don't get me wrong. And I know people that have it. If it was given to me, hey, yeah, I would, I would probably say, okay, cool. But I love other ones in, in the Visconti line. So that, I use that as an example. Uh, so yeah, it could be a feeling, but I, right now, I'm just enjoying collecting. So let's go on. And number eight, consequently, what would you do if another pen and ink came along? Again, I would really have to think about it. And it, you know, if it really spoke to me, if a pen spoke to me and it had uh, some type of memory to it or a feeling, I may get it. And, you know, when I talk about uh, different pens, when I talk about a feeling, uh, I recently got a Bennu, uh, the Ocean Dreams, and I absolutely love it. Uh, it has whales on it. I live on the ocean, so it, it's great, and I, it, I love the resin and everything. But when I got it in, it also reminded me of a bedtime story that I used to tell my daughter. She, I would make up uh, stories, and she'd say, Mommy, can you tell me that story about Princess Alexandra swimming with the whales? And so I had this really cute made-up story, and when I got the pen in, I'm like looking at this pen, looking at this pen, and I'm like, oh my, um, just right here, I don't know if you can see it or not, um, it'd be hard to see, but right here, there's the fairy that reminds me of my daughter, um, dark hair and uh, swimming with the whales. So this pen now has a lot more meaning to me, and I, I love it, I, I use it all the time. And Benu makes some amazing pens. Like I said, I use a lot of the Benus for my shimmer inks. I don't know what Benu does, but they, uh, the shimmer inks work amazingly well in, in this pen, in my Benu pens. I have a lot of different pens. I love them all. Uh, I wanna, I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, some of the lines, like right here sitting on my desk, I have a tray of Esther books, you know, and the resins and everything are beautiful, and I do love them, and I'm like, just like, they're, they're, they're amazing. Uh, we have the Mont Blancs, like I just showed you. My, I'm very excited that I was able to get a uh, 100th anniversary. I just happened to be at the mall, and there was a Mont Blanc store, and I went in there, and they said, oh, can I, do you have the new pens in yet? And they said, uh, we just got one in. It just came in today. And I'm like, oh my God, sold. And uh, it's just beautiful. Absolutely love it. Uh, we have nibs, I'm doing new nibs. I'm trying different nib grinds and everything. Uh, Kurt Spears, I have uh, some of his nib grinds. Uh, we do, uh, I, I really enjoy writing with his Waverly nib, and it's, it's really kind of cool. I have it on a couple of pens. And then um, I have a Monarch nib, I, you know, from Shown Design. And that's a cool, interesting nib, and it's, it's the rainbow one. And uh, I love that. And then I just got, in, on a Leonardo, I got a uh, Monty Wind field nib. It's a triple stack. It's just absolutely stunning. And um, I'll probably insert a lot of pictures, you know, in, in, in here as well. You'll see it. Um, and uh, let's see. Oh, another uh, grail pen that we got previously loved is a Michel Poujon uh, fountain pen. Uh, he used to design for uh, Fabergé and it's beautiful and just extremely happy we got it previously loved. Uh, when I talked about uh, some of the grail pens and everything going back, now that I'm thinking about this, uh, Tasha was having a auction at the Philly Pen Show and I bid on a, I got it, I won the bid, beautiful pen, uh, uh, it's Arushi and abalone, and these abalone shells are cut at an angle. 
and it's stunning. And I was happy to be able to help. The money proceeds are going to help the victims in Japan that were affected by the earthquake. A lot of these Ibushi artists survived, you know, in, in Fatasha, they all survived, but their workshops did not. Uh, they lost their tools, they lost their inventory, they lost their, basically, their livelihood to make gorgeous pens. So it will take a long time to rebuild. Uh, and I'm enjoying this fountain pen journey. Uh, join the journaling. The people that I've met this past year, we have some great friends that we've met. I have a, a friend of mine that we get together when we can. She lives about an hour and a half away, and she'll come and we'll do journaling weekends and have like a little retreat. And I want to thank this community of fountain pen people because it has it is a, a community, and we all get together uh, pen clubs and. Uh, just even when we go to the shows and it's just really the camaraderie with everybody has been absolutely wonderful so I want to thank be thankful for that another thing that we do I love to pen able people and I my husband and I it we have people friends over and stuff and they look at our fountain pen collection and believe me I have fountain pens everywhere in the, in our apartment and you know it's always great for conversation and people are like, wow, you know, we didn't know about fountain pens. And, and if they're really into it, we, keep, we have a few fountain pens that we have uh, that we keep that we use as basically giveaways. And we love to penable people. We give them some inks and stuff. And it makes us happy to do that. I do giveaways on my Instagram uh, sometimes. And I just, I, I just love to do it. It makes me happy. And uh, it's, it's just really fun. So I will promise to do more videos as well. I'm, I, it, life has like gotten a little hectic these past few months, and I have a whole lineup that I want to do. They will be coming out soon. But I will want to discuss a lot of the different uh, pen brands that I do own and uh, go into more detail with the pens and talk more about them. So I want to say thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. If you've liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. And as I always say, ciao for now and have a great day.